Hello again, Epworth family and friends. It is a pleasure to join you on this Friday, May 27th. It is truly a fabulous Friday. Um, before we begin, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. Lord, please allow something that is said today to uh, grow and take hold in our lives that we're able to use it and share it with others. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Today on this Friday, we'll be coming from Acts chapter 16, verse 22 to, through 26. Acts chapter 16, verses 22 through 26. I'm going to read from NIV and it reads, the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in their stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and once all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. If I can, we're going to talk for a little bit today, and the title would be Focus during frustration. Say that with me. Focus during frustration. How many of you have or are going through a certain situation? How, how many of you can relate to, you know, you're doing the right thing, but it seems like trouble is coming here and there. I'm going to church. I'm, 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 I'm giving my tithes. I'm, I'm trying to live a good life, but things are happening. That's what we see happening right here in this verse. And that's why we're saying and claiming on this Friday, focus during frustration. And when you're going through, I want to encourage you with this verse. Second Corinthians. Chapter four, verse 17. Second Corinthians, chapter four, verse 17 says, for this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison momentary. That's what it says. Momentary. So we got to remember and put things in perspective that we will go through in life, but it's momentary. Let me give you the background in Acts. What actually is happening here, what happens before verse 22 is that Paul and Silas actually see this slave girl. She's a slave. And, and, and she keeps bothering them every day talking about, oh, well, this is what they come to do and everything else. And, and so this is how she, this is how the people that own her made the money. And so what actually end up happening that what we see in the verse is that they turned to this woman. Paul turned to her and said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her, that, that, that spirit that was inside this woman. And so that picks up on verse 22 that we read. Verse 22 said the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. Huh. Doesn't that sound like different things that we may have going on that, you know, I, I, I was doing the right thing and, and, and I'm trying to walk a good path. But now it seems like the crowd. What is the crowd? Other people that don't even know. But as soon as they hear something, now they want to just just pile on to it. That's not it's not just you. It has happened before. But glory be to God. We're going to learn how to focus during our frustration, because can we agree that has to be very frustrating that I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't cheat anybody. I didn't wrong anyone. But yet and still the crowd joined in on this attack against me. Hmm. So verse 22, we see that the that the crowd joined in and and so much so that they had been beaten. But then go with me to verse 25. It says about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening to them. We're going to stop right there. We have to focus during frustration. And, and while we're focusing, we have to get back to our relationship with God. 
What am I saying? That what we have to do is we have to do what we saw Paul and Silas. They had been beaten, wrongly accused and everything else. But what did they do? What, what does uh, Second Corinthians say? Our light affliction is only temporary. And so what is Paul and Silas doing? They're praying and singing hymns to God. We have to make sure that we pray and not just over our dinner. Hmm. Make sure that we spend that one on one time with the author and finisher of our faith. And also, a lot of times when we're going through, we have to have a hymn or something on our mouth and on our lips that we can praise God through it all. We got to praise through the pain. Hallelujah. Sometimes we got to praise through that pain. And that's how we can get to what we're talking about this entire week. This entire week, we've been talking about the rejoice principle. That's how we're going to get there. Let's and, and, and lastly, before we move on to verse 26, verse 25, the last part said what? And the other prisoners were listening to them. Let me encourage the, uh, anyone that's listening that may be a parent or a guardian. Somebody is listening to you. Hmm. And even if you are a younger person, God has placed something on your life that when you go out that house today and you go about your day, someone is looking and listening. So make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to do. And like Paul and Silas, giving glory to God. Let's finish up this moment. Verse 26. Verse 26 reads, suddenly, suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Let me let, let's start back to the beginning. Suddenly, somebody say suddenly. So the thing is, when we actually have focus during our frustration and we actually spend that time with with with, with Jesus, it's going to happen suddenly. And what it says right here is that violently they came open and things were shaken. One thing that I want to tell everybody, and you know this with that COVID pandemic, when things are shaken, they don't settle in the same place. Uh Oh, somebody felt that when things are shaken, they don't fall in the same place, nor should they. So the thing is, when those things become shaken in your life, it, it's not going to feel good. Think about it. If it was a violent earthquake and the doors flew up and everything else, that had to be pretty rough. So when you actually start praying, there will be a move in your life. But know that that move is coming. The Bible says joy may not come in the morning. But it will come. It will come. Trouble does not last always. The last part of that right here says that the. Foundation of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew, and everyone's chain came loose. The last thing I want to encourage you right here from what we see from Paul and Silas is that when you pray, other people are going to get the benefits as well. What am I saying? That when you actually work on your relationship with God, your spouse, your children, your coworkers, other people are going to see a change. So, with that being said, on this Friday, I want you to focus during. The frustration. Keep praying. Keep fasting. Spend time with God. Yes, joy will come. It may not come when you think, but it will come. And then when it comes, it's going to affect others. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this lesson. I thank you for teaching us on this Friday as far as focusing during frustration. Please allow us to. Hide this word in our hearts. Allow us to continue to focus during the frustration, be able to pray, have a song on our lips to glorify your name. We pray that this word heals and restores us. In Jesus name we pray. Amen.